This sculpture marks one end of the coast-to-coast -coast cycle path from Whitehaven on the Irish Sea to Tynemouth on the North Sea. I'm aiming to cycle this route with youngest son Ben on our fold-up commuter bikes. We start with the traditional baptism of tyres. The tide was low and the slipway was very slippery. In fact, I had genuine fears of slipping over and breaking my arm before we'd even begun. I like Whitehaven. At one time, it was England's third largest port measured by trade in sugar, rum and uh, slaves. I was expecting a simple C2C logo to follow from end to end, but sadly not. In fact, it's not even a cycle path to begin with. It's the B5345 until you turn off opposite Asda and down by Home Bargains. This route weaves out of Whitehaven, crossing under the modern railway line several times before following the route of an old railway line that was closed in the 1950s. This is a very pleasant cycleway with a gentle climb. On up towards Cleeter Moor. The only issue here is that the old tarmac is being broken up by tree roots. It's not a problem if you're taking it steady. On past the ghostly platforms of forgotten stations. And a preview of what lies ahead the foothills of the Lake District. Sustrans Sustainable Transport worked with government to oversee the National Cycle Network. And here we met two Sustrans workers, one with a weed whacker Morning. and the other with a clipboard. You Sustrans as well. Yeah. It wasn't tough, but we have climbed about 600 feet in about 15 miles. We now leave the old railway and join the road through Kirkland, Feldyke, Lamplew. There are beautiful views to the north and the west over the valley of the River Marron. Although this is public road and it is August high tourist season, we only met four or five cars between here and Lowe's Water. Time for a break, so we met support crew, wife Belinda and mother-in-law Jill. What a place for lunch, by the side of this quiet, mile-long, unspoiled lake. We're now looking southeast. The peak is Melbreck and the lake in the distance is Crummock Water. On through Brackenthwaite and down along Lawton Vale. We are in Low Lawton and this is the River Cocker. <laughs> well done, me Cocker. Now we're starting to go up. Ben's thing, he says this is about 12%. It's at least that. We are on a very quiet road parallel to the B5292, which climbs the Winlatter Pass. There was not much vehicular traffic, and what there was, was very respectful of us cyclists. We're currently 1,150 feet altitude and I think we're at our highest point of the day. After Winlatter it's quite a steep descent. I would have got more film but I was too afraid to let go of the handlebars. Take the next right. 
keep left for Swinside and the inevitable jokes about Dad being too heavy for the bridge. After the downhill is a gentle run. Where are you going? You forgot where it is. Into Little Braithwaite and Ullock and across Newlands Beck. I think this farmer wanted to join the Red Arrows. This is Red Leader. Smoke on. Go! The last bit into Keswick is on the busiest road so far and the cycle path just ends. Come on Keswick, you can do better than this. There's plenty of room on the other side for a separate cycle path. I love Keswick, although all the people is a bit of a shock after seeing hardly anybody all morning. The next 10k is perfect following the old Keswick to Threlkeld Railway and crisscrossing the spectacular River Greta. Ah, oh, it's a fly fisherman. While I was watching, he didn't catch a single fly. At Threlkeld, Cycle Route 71 tries to keep off the A66 trunk roads. There are some idyllic tracks under Blencathra and Scales Fell. But after these sometimes long and undulating detours, you're back on the A66. Then, more beautiful track. But looking ahead, you can see where you're going to again be alongside the A66. It was getting late and we had people to meet, so instead of the final detour to Castle Greystoke, isn't that where He-Man lives, and Little Blen Cow and Newton Rainey, we stayed on the A66 and covered six speedy downhill miles into Penrith in well under half an hour. It did feel a bit cheaty, but nowhere near as bad as Maurice Garin, the winner of the 1903 Tour de France, who was later disqualified when it was found that on some of the longer stages, he caught the train. This is where we've come from, the lakes. Moving time 6 hours, average speed 8.3 miles an hour, climbing 2,750 feet. And now looking east, at the top of the screen, covered in cloud, the route for tomorrow. The Pennines, the spine of England, and the really big climbs.